what is going on everybody happy friday the topic for today's video is going to be a follow-up for my previous video where i posted my first uh, full two tanks of gas after doing my lift and tires and how thrilled i was with the results uh, because i was expecting a few miles per gallon loss with the heavy tires and all that like i've heard tons of other people report uh, but much to my positive surprise, I only lost about one mile per gallon, uh, giving me right at 18 miles a gallon uh, on a lifted Tacoma, which is uh, I'm thrilled about. So this uh, video will be a follow-up to that on a few general tips you can do to get better gas mileage. Uh, not in a, I know this is a Tacoma talk video, but obviously not in Tacomas. Uh, in any Jeep, you know, any kind of a truck or 4x4 uh, that has a lift and tire. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy the video. I hope you can use some of these tips to uh, get a couple more MPGs. Uh, so before we actually get into it, I'd like to give a quick shout out to on Tacoma World. There's a user named Jack0928 in California. I just want to let him know I'm wearing this shirt just for him. He knows what I'm talking about. If you're watching, buddy, post a comment below. Hope you guys have a great weekend. So let's get started. A couple quick things to mention before I actually get started with the uh, the tips. I've got some good news and some bad news. Uh, it's sort of it's like a double-edged sword. It cuts both ways depending on how you look at it. So all of these tips I'm going to mention, it is nothing you have to buy for your vehicle, uh, spend money on. They are all behavioral things you need to do, which uh, sounds easy, but uh, it might mean breaking a few bad habits. Probably breaking a few bad habits. Uh, so just keep that in mind and just remember all of these things I'm telling you they might seem difficult at first even though in theory they're they could not be uh, more simple but they'll be difficult at first especially if you're used to driving uh, like a wild banshee wherever you go so uh, but the good news is uh, the more you do stuff the easier it gets so once you reach a point where you're not even thinking about it anymore uh, that's going to be the happy spot as far as getting some better MPGs on your uh, lifted rig is concerned so let's get started All right, tip one, and I know this is going to be a complete surprise to you guys, but if you want to get better MPGs in your rig, you cannot have a heavy foot. You cannot expect to be over-accelerating everywhere, flooring it to get on when you're merging, etc., to get around people, and expect to get good, good gas mileage. And the bad thing about this is, uh, well, when you're not uh, accelerating that fast, it's it's hard to drive around depending on where you are if like I'm in Northern Virginia right outside DC terrible drivers aggressive drivers so if you're not getting around people you're pretty much just letting people right in front of you and that's a, that just has to be a trade-off you're willing to make uh, that people are gonna go around you maybe so try to stay in the right lane it's just something you have to accept to get better gas mileage Furthermore, uh, it, it's something you have to do all the time. So you could drive like the most fuel efficient driver 95% of the time, but if you're flooring your vehicle from a standstill to get up to whatever your cruising speed's gonna be, then you, you're pretty much throwing all that hard work of driving uh, smartly. You're throwing that right down the toilet. So you have to be vigilant. Just remember, uh, you cannot have a heavy foot. There's no way around it. So. That's tip one. Again, should not be a shock to anyone. All right, the second tip uh, pretty much just expands on uh, tip one of uh, not having a heavy foot is uh, you pretty much can't even have a medium foot because that still will kill your gas mileage. So definitely go with a light foot. But while that sounds good in theory, what, what, what the hell does that mean? Uh, so I'm going to talk about now is what I call the sweet spot in the RPM range. Uh, revolutions per minute for your engine. Pretty much a gauge on how hard your engine is working. Uh, and it doesn't really matter what kind of vehicle you're driving. If you, when you accelerate, if you can keep your uh, your RPMs between 1500 and 2000, that's going to do wonders for your gas mileage. Whereas even just casual medium acceleration is gonna have your RPMs probably close, close to 3000. And obviously if you're flooring it, that's gonna just make, make it worse from there. So 1,500 to 2,000 RPMs. Uh, that's what I found works best for me. I can 
usually, even if, I have a, if I'm at a dead stop at the bottom of a hill and I have to accelerate up that without carrying any momentum, I've found that if I can keep my uh, needle at 1500, uh, the closer to 1500 the better. If I can keep it there, that is a comfortable speed of acceleration where I feel like I'm not uh, keeping, you know, bottlenecking everyone behind me because that's a terrible feeling when you're driving is that you're slowing other people down. At least for me, I hate that. I hate when I see people, they're oblivious to the speed limit, you know, driving 10, 15, around here, 20, 25 miles under the speed limit. That, to me, is just as dangerous as uh, going 25 miles over the speed limit. So, uh, obviously, if you can get your RPMs lower than 1,500, that will be even better. Uh, depending on, you know, how you're accelerating, if you're going down a hill, for example, uh, aim for 1,000 then. But uh, generally speaking, 1,500 to 2,000. And again, this will be difficult at first if you're not used to driving like this. Uh, but the more you do it, the more uh, easy it will become. So to start out, I would definitely recommend actively looking at your tachometer when you're accelerating to see what a certain RPM range feels like on the gas pedal. And after you do that for a week or two, you won't even have to look at the RPM range. You'll know by how much pressure you're putting on the gas pedal. Uh, where you where you are exactly, you know, within a, a hundred or two hundred RPMs, obviously, it's not going to be perfect. So, uh, just think about that. And another thing uh, that will help you ease into this uh, to train your mind and your foot to drive at this lower RPM. It might sound stupid, but hey, it worked for me, and I'm now I'm doing it blind almost. So, uh, pretend there is an eggshell behind the accelerator gas pedal. So when you're pushing on it push too hard you're gonna break the eggshell and uh, cause a big mess so just keep that in mind all the time until you get this habit down uh, it will be definitely worth your while uh, one more quick thing to uh, expand on tip two when you're training yourself to drive uh, at a lower rpm I mentioned uh, you have to you know you watch your tachometer to see where you are until you get comfortable with that please be careful don't sit there and stare at your tachometer and ignore the traffic going ahead of you just glance down at it uh, you know, just look at the needle real quick. You'll see it's right at the bottom between 1 and 2,000. So just be careful. Obviously, keep your eyes on the road at all times. So be safe out there while you're getting good gas mileage. The uh, acceleration is especially important that you do it lightly when you're going from first, from a dead stop, from first gear to second gear, and then through third gear because when you're running uh, the bigger tires that are either wider and or heavier, that's when your uh, rolling resistance is going to be highest from a dead stop and that's where your engine's going to have to work uh, harder than it was with your factory tires uh, to get those bigger tires going so this is where you just have to be extra careful. Once you get into third gear uh, you'll notice it's a lot easier to accelerate, you feel like your engine's putting out a lot less energy so like if you're on the highway and you have to slow down it's not that big a deal to get back up to speed uh, because you're already traveling at a much higher speed so the, the rolling resistance is much less. Uh, another thing to quickly point out, uh, I've noticed that particularly when going from first to second gear is, and I'm going to do a video clip of this in just a second to show you what I'm talking about so if it doesn't make sense just bear with me. Uh, it's called what I call uh, like an acceleration jump in the RPMs and I'm not a mechanic but it may be, I don't know, if it's uh, like a, the cam kicking in extra, something like that. Again, I'm not a mechanic, so by getting stuff completely wrong, please forgive me. Uh, when you're accelerating slowly, your RPMs will climb at a, you know, if you're looking at a chart, in a perfect straight line, and then uh, even if you're on flat ground, it'll sort of jump. For me, it's usually right at uh, 1500 RPMs where it'll all of a sudden want to jump, even though I'm putting the same exact pressure on the pedal it'll jump ahead a couple hundred RPMs. And that's just on flat ground. If there's any kind of hill, it will obviously uh, do this a lot uh, more prevalently uh, and jump up. And I've noticed, uh, like in my neighborhood, it going, you know, neighborhood 25, 30 miles an hour speeds, there are certain parts where there's a slight incline where I'm accelerating, and it will always do this. So if you typically drive the same route, say to and from work, uh, the more you practice this stuff, you will learn exact spots where these things happen and it'll make it that much more easy to uh, to counterbalance. And coming up here is an example of, uh, I'm going to show you where there's a small hair where I get that uh, acceleration kick. 
I'll show you that real quick. So I'm driving, you can see my RPM's under 1500. I know my steering's wheel blocking it. It'll be clear in just a second. So still at 1500, I shifted and then coming up right there. It kicked up about 300 RPMs, which yeah, 300 RPMs is not a lot, but when you're already talking about, I was only going about 1200 RPMs to begin with, you're talking about 25% increase. So that's what you need to watch out for. And my uh, last tip for increasing your gas mileage is to be aware of anything that has the potential to slow you down and act accordingly. So what do I mean by that? If you are, if you're driving along, you see a stoplight up ahead that's red, there's no one in, ahead of you, and if, as long as there's, you know, not a ton of cars behind you, then coast down to the stoplight, that way you're not using extra gas. Again, if there's tons of cars behind you, you can still coast down, you don't have to use your brakes the whole way, but just, you know, do it appropriately. Uh, other things that will slow you down, uh, school buses, work trucks, dump trucks, etc. Once you are traveling at whatever the speed limit is, you want to maintain that speed uh, within reason. And if you can avoid, you know, lane change, do things safely to get around those slower moving vehicles, uh, that is definitely the way to go so you don't lose that momentum you've already uh, expended the gas during acceleration to achieve. Uh, another big thing I almost forgot is hills. Obviously, if you have a flat route uh, to and from work, for example, then you are good to go. Uh, my route is particularly hilly uh, for most of it, so uh, one of the things you have to, that's the hardest thing probably to learn how to do. Uh, especially if you have to accelerate from the bottom of the hill. So uh, try to gain, maintain uh, whatever the speed limit is, say if it's 45 miles an hour, try to gain a few extra miles an hour uh, going down the hill. That way when you have to go back up on the opposite side, uh, you will still maintain the same pedal pressure, like I mentioned before, around 1500 RPMs. Uh, but by the, by the time you get to the top of the hill, uh, you will have gone from say 48, 49, uh, drop down to whatever the speed limit was, so 45. And again, that's it's harder than it sounds at first, but with everything else I've mentioned, uh, it just becomes easier the more you practice it. Uh, so that is pretty much it for the video, gentlemen. I hope you were able to take a few of these tips and incorporate them into your own driving. Again, everything I've said, it's not difficult. The only hard part is just making it a habit so you're doing it without even thinking about it and uh, lightening up those heavy feet. So if you try some of these and it actually helps you out, which it should, uh, please post below. Let me know how much your miles per gallon increased as a result. I would love to see some of those. And as always, please subscribe if you have not already. Give the video a thumbs up, comment below. Stay tuned for more great videos. I am flirting with the idea of doing a similar video like this on how to increase your miles per gallon with a lifted truck with heavy mud tires. Uh, but just a spoof or comedy version. So if you're interested in that, let me know too. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you later.